Let me bring up Eliezer Yudkowsky, who recently sat where you're sitting. <laughs> he thinks that AI will almost surely kill everyone. Do you agree with him or not? Yes, but maybe for a different reason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I'll try to uh, get you to find hope where we could find a no to that answer. But why yes? Okay. Why didn't nuclear weapons kill everyone? That's a good question. I think there's an answer. I think it's actually very hard to deploy nuclear weapons tactically. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to accomplish tactical objectives. Great. I can nuke their country. I have an irradiated pile of rubble. I don't want that. Why not? Why don't I want an irradiated pile of rubble? Yeah. For all the reasons no one wants an irradiated pile of rubble. Oh, because you can't use that land for, uh, for resources. You can't populate the land. Yeah. Well, what you want, a, a, a total victory in a war, is not usually the ir irradiation and eradication of the people there. It's the subjugation and domination of the people. Mm. Okay. So you can't use it strategically, tactically in a war yeah. to help you to, to help uh, gain a military advantage. It's all complete destruction. All right. Yeah. But there's egos involved. It's still surprising. It's still surprising that nobody pressed the big red button. It's somewhat surprising, but you see, it's the little red button that's going to be pressed with AI that's going to, you know, and that's why we die. It's it's not because the AI, if there's anything in the nature of AI, it's just the nature of humanity. What's the algorithm behind the little red button? What, like, what, what, what possible ideas do you have for the how human species ends? Sure. So I think the most uh, obvious way to me is wireheading. We end up amusing ourselves to death. We end up all staring at that infinite TikTok and forgetting to eat. Maybe, maybe it's even more benign than this. Maybe we all just stop reproducing. Now, to be fair, it's probably hard, hard to get all of humanity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it probably There's always go like the the interesting thing about humanity is the diversity in it. Oh yeah. You know, organisms in general. There's a lot of weirdos out there. Well, Two of them are sitting here. I mean, diversity in humanity is... With due respect. <laughs> I wish I was more weird. No, yeah. like I'm kind of, look, I'm drinking smart water, man. That's like a Coca-Cola product, right? Do you want corporate, George Haas? Yeah, I want corporate. <laughs> uh, no, the amount of diversity in humanity, I think, is decreasing. Uh, just like all the other biodiversity on the planet. Oh, boy. Yeah. Right? And social media is not helping, huh? Go eat McDonald's in China. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's uh, the interconnectedness. That's 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 doing it. Oh, that's interesting. So everybody starts relying on the connectivity of the internet, and over time, that reduces the diversity, the intellectual diversity, and then that gets you everybody into a funnel. There's still going to be a guy in Texas. There is, and yeah, in a it, bunker. To, to be fair, do I think AI kills us all? Uh, I think AI kills everything we call like society today. Mm -hmm. I do not think it actually kills the human species. I think that's actually incredibly hard to do. Yeah, but society, like if we start over, that's tricky. Most of us don't know how to do most things. Yeah, but some of us do. And they'll be okay and they'll rebuild after the uh, great AI. What's rebuilding look like? How far, like how much do we lose? Like, wh wh What has human civilization done that's interesting? A combustion engine, electricity. So uh, power and energy, that's interesting. Like how to harness energy. Whoa, that, whoa, whoa, whoa. They're going to be religiously against that. Are they going to get back to uh, like fire? Sure. I mean, there'll be a, there'll be, it'll, it'll be like, you know, some kind of Amish looking kind of thing, I think. I think they're going to have very strong taboos against technology. Hmm. Like technology is almost like a new religion. Technology is the devil. Yeah. And uh, nature is God. Sure. So closer to nature. But can you really get away from AI if it destroyed 99% of the human species? Isn't it somehow have a hold, like a stronghold? Well, what's interesting about everything we build, I think we're going to build super intelligence before we build any sort of robustness in the AI. We cannot build an AI that is capable of going out into nature and surviving like a, um, like a bird, right? A bird is an incredibly robust organism. We've built nothing like this. We haven't built a machine that's capable of reproducing. 
Yes. But there is, uh, you know, I work with leg robots a lot right. now. I have a bunch of them. Um, they're mobile. Mm-hmm. They can't reproduce, but all they need is, I guess you're saying they can't repair themselves. But if you have a large number, if you have like 100 million of them. Let's just focus on them reproducing, right? Do they have microchips in them? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then do they include a fab? No. Then how are they going to reproduce? Well, it doesn't have to be all on board, right? They can go to a, a factory, to a repair shop. Yeah, but then you're really moving away from robustness. Yes. All of life is capable of reproducing without needing to go to a repair shop. Mm -hmm. Life will continue to reproduce in the complete absence of civilization. Robots will not. So when the, if if the AI apocalypse happens, I mean, the AIs are going to probably die out because I think Mm -hmm. we're going to get, again, super intelligence long before we get robustness. What about if you just improve the fab to where you, you just have a 3D printer that can always help you? Well, that'd be very interesting. I'm interested in building that. <laughs> of course you are. You think, how difficult is that problem? To have a robot that uh, basically can build itself. Very, very hard. I think you've mentioned this like uh, to me or somewhere where people think it's easy conceptually. And then they remember that you're going to have to have a fab. Yeah, on board. Of course. So 3D printer that prints a 3D printer. Yeah, on legs. Why yeah. is that hard? Well, because it's not, I mean, a 3D printer is a very simple machine, right? Okay, you're going to print chips? You're going to have an atomic printer? How are you going to dope the silicon? Yeah. Right? How are you going to etch the silicon? You're going to have to have a, a a very interesting kind of fab if you want to ha- have a lot of computation on board. But you can do like s- structural type of robots that are dumb. Yeah, but structural type of robots aren't going to have the intelligence required to survive in any complex environment. What about like ants type of systems? We have like trillions of them. I don't think this works. I mean, again, like ants at their very core are made up of cells that are capable of individually reproducing. They're doing quite a lot, a lot of computation that we're taking for granted. It's not even just the computation. It's that reproduction is so inherent. Okay, so like there's two stacks of life in the world. Mm -hmm. There's the biological stack and the silicon stack. The biological stack starts with reproduction. Reproduction is at the absolute core. The first proto-RNA organisms were capable of reproducing. The silicon stack, despite as far as it's come, is nowhere near being able to reproduce. Yeah. So the the, the fab movement, uh, uh, digital fabrication, fabrication in the full range of what that means is still in the early stages. You're interested in this world. Even if you did put a fab on the machine, right? Let's say, okay, you know, we can build fabs. We know how to do that as humanity. We can probably put all the precursors that build all the machines and the fabs also in the machine. So first off, this machine is going to be absolutely massive. I mean, we almost have a, like, think of the size of the thing required to reproduce a machine today, right? Like, is our civilization capable of reproduction? Can we reproduce our civilization on Mars? If we were to construct a machine that is made up of humans, like a company mm-hmm. that can reproduce itself, yeah, I don't know. I f- it feels like 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 115 people. It gets so much harder than that. 120. <laughs> <laughs> I've well, been looking see. for a number. I believe that Twitter can be run by 50 people. Uh, I think that this is going to take most of. Like, it's just most of society, right? Like, we live in one globalized world now. No, but you're not interested in running Twitter. You're interested in seeding. Like, um, you want to seed a civilization and then, because humans can, like, Oh, okay, you're talking about, yeah, okay. So you're talking about the humans reproducing and, like, basically, like, what's the smallest self-sustaining colony of humans? Yeah. Yeah, okay, fine. But they're not going to be making five nanometer chips. Over time, they will. I think you're being, uh, like, we have to expand our conception of time here. Going back to the original. Right, uh, right. Time scale. I mean, over across maybe a hundred generations, we're back to making chips. No, if you seed the colony correctly, maybe. Or maybe they'll watch our colony die out over here and be like, "We're not making chips. Don't make chips." No, but you have to seed that colony correctly. You Whatever know? you do, don't make chips. Chips are what led to their downfall. Hmm. 
Well, that is the thing that humans do. They they come up, they construct a devil, a good thing and a bad thing, and they really stick by that, and yeah. then they murder each other over that. There's always one asshole in the room who murders everybody. <laughs> and he usually makes tattoos and nice branding. With now, do you, do you need that asshole? That's the question, right? Humanity works really hard today to get rid of that asshole, but I think they might be important. Yeah, this whole freedom of speech thing. It's its the freedom of being an asshole seems kind of important. That's right. Man, this thing, this fab, this human fab that we constructed, this human civilization is pretty interesting. And now it's building artificial copies of itself or artificial copies of various aspects of itself that seem interesting, like intelligence. And I wonder where that goes. I like to think it's just like another stack for life. Like we have like the bio stack life, like we're a bio stack life and then the silicon stack life. But it seems like the ceiling... Or there might not be a ceiling, in the, or at least the ceiling is much higher for the for the silicon stack. Oh no, I don't. I, we don't know what the ceiling is for the bio stack either. The bio stack, the bio stack just seem, seem to move slower. Um, you have uh, Moore's law, uh, which is not dead despite many proclamations. Uh, in the to, bio stack or the silicon in stack? in the silicon stack, uh -huh. and you don't have anything like this in the bio stack. So I have a, a meme that I, I posted. I tried to make a meme; it didn't work too well. But um, I posted a picture of uh, you know Ronald Reagan and, and, and Joe Biden, and you look. This is 1980, and this is 2020. Yeah. And these two humans are basically like the same, right? There's no, there's no like like there. There's been no change in humans in the last 40 years. Yeah. And then I posted a computer from 1980 and a computer from 2020. Wow. Yeah, with their early early stages, right? Which is why you said when you said the fab, the size of the fab required to make another fab is like uh, very large right now. Oh yeah. But computers were very large um, 80 years ago and they got pretty tiny and they're, they're, people are starting to want to wear them on their face um, in order to escape reality. That's the thing. In order to be live inside the computer. Yeah. Put a screen right here. I don't have to see the rest of you assholes. <laughs>